Okay, Nick and Andy, massive game coming up in the Premier League this weekend. Really tasty one in North London. Arsenal against Aston Villa. The Gunners, top of the league. Big win at Brighton last weekend. Aston Villa scrapping for the Champions League, which would be a huge achievement for them. And, and both teams arguably have, have overachieved this season, you could say, heading into this uh, final few weeks of the campaign. Nick, I'm going to come to you first. Does this game against Aston Villa, the way they play, um, just kind of make us think that this could be Arsenal's biggest stumbling block between now and the end of the season? They have some tough games remaining, but I just think this matchup in particular could cause them a lot of problems. Look, I would like to say yes. It should be yes, according to the table, but uh, I've, I've kind of harped on this. I hope it's not super annoying. Um, for the last few months, since beating Man City and Arsenal, Villa beat teams below them and they either lose or draws to, draw to teams around them and above them. And so I don't think it's necessarily a matter of playing to their level or anything like that. I think they're a, a fantastic team, but there's just something that's been getting to them in the big games outside of, outside of Europe. And uh, you're absolutely right that this should be the toughest test on their schedule. But I just kind of look at it and I think, what villa are we going to see? But I don't think the nerves are going to get to Arsenal. I, I just feel like that doesn't happen. It's going to take mistakes or something else. Because right now, I just don't have doubts about Arsenal's mentality, which is which is a nice development for them. No, it really is. I mean, what they've got Wolves, Chelsea, Tottenham, Man United, Everton on the final day still to play, Andy. So there are some really tricky ones there for Arsenal to navigate. I'm, I'm looking forward to being at the Emirates. I'll be there for PST on Sunday for this one. And I'm... Looking forward to seeing what the atmosphere is like because all season long and even last season, it's been such a positive atmosphere as the fans have really been behind Arteta, this young team building up to this kind of moment, I guess. But I feel like there might be a few nerves in the air after that performance against Bayern Munich in midweek where some of the defensive deficiencies kind of came to the fore again. Um, and they were counterattacked pretty well as well by Bayern. So um, I guess my question to you is, again, stylistically, what kind of challenges is going to be for Arsenal? And then secondly, how heavily will Arteta rotate the team? Because he did it before against Luton. And then with Bayern Munich either side of this game, it's, it's kind of difficult, right, to see where his priorities yeah. are going to lie. Yeah, I don't know that you can rotate against this Villa team. They, yeah. are, you know, they are a bit ruthless. And obviously they have to contend with... Um, you know, like they're in that weird place where, and Nick laid it out perfectly, the teams below them really can't hang with them at the moment. But those teams above them that have that extra little bit of quality, uh, they're at just just at the very, very top of the sport. Those are those are the game deciders. Those are the game the match winners, especially at this point of the season. And then so they've done very well to get into the point that they're in. Uh, it stylistically, it kind of you would think that any matchup against the big sides sets up well for Villa, the way that they play. They want to get seven, eight, nine behind the ball and defend, and, and, and they'll give you possession where they want you to have possession. They're not going to let you indiscriminately uh, you know, get into the penalty area. They're going to show you areas of the field. You can have the ball here. You're not a threat to us. And then when they win it back, it's the counterattack going back the other direction. So you would assume the teams are going to have 55, 60, maybe 65% of possession would be teams that they could get at. Uh, but defensively, they've been a little bit weak, uh, especially the second half of the season. They were kind of locked down defensively uh, in the first half of the season. And it's between injuries uh, and just the, the number of games that they have had to play this season, important games, high intensity games. Uh, they have slowly, slowly kind of deteriorated defensively. But I will I will ask this. Is there anybody who would enjoy it more to prevent Arsenal from potentially winning the Premier League title than Unai Emery? The way that he was, let's just say it, the way he was mistreated in the 18 months that he yep. was at Arsenal. One, not given a chance. Two, immediately rushed to judgment. Get him out. He's not good enough. Goes back to Spain and then comes back to the Premier League and takes a I mean, not long since promoted team, correct? And and immediately into Europe, immediately into Champions League chase. This would be, for him at least, the storybook ending. It really would be. And when we talk about Aston Villa, we, we look at some of the key absentees for this game. Obviously, a lot of defensive injuries you mentioned there, Andy. But Douglas Louise being out, Nick, uh, through suspension, it's a big one, right? Like, he's sure. there 
in the engine room he makes them tick he sets the tone for how aggressive they are um and the way that they play on the counter so that's a positive um for arsenal but again they did lose to villa earlier in the season as well so i wonder you know is that going to be in the back of their mind a little bit or is this arsenal team like you mentioned earlier just a bit of a machine right now when it comes to their mentality and grinding out wins even if they're not at their best look it's a different arsenal team um to that yeah. point in the season also um you know that's before the festive fixtures it might have even been near the end of the champions league group stage yes. uh it, it might have been right around there but you know back then we're talking about that game against luton that was a seven goal game is around there somewhere this was just a different time for them and then they went through that post christmas struggle where they lost a couple of games and they've just come out and i mean they don't allow goals <laughs> yeah. They so rarely allow goals. They shut out Man City. I mean, that's that's enough of a thing. That doesn't really happen. So right now, I, I look at this team. They're they're crushing almost everyone. Um, I don't. They're not at Man City stage of last year, two years ago, where they're toying with people. But it is. They're they're not far from clicking into that gear. They keep the ball, like Andy said have the ball in this spot where you're not going to do anything with it. Go ahead and shoot. There is a sort of arrogance about them that yeah. this year feels earned. I, I would say early in the half of last year, it was like, oh, this this feels like it could come back to bite you. And that's self-fulfilling prophecy. I realize that. But this year, the, the arrogance is earned. And in the Premier League, they've been un, unreal. Yeah. I was, I was at Brighton last weekend when they demolished them 3-0. Could have been more than that. Spoke to Captain Martin Odegaard afterwards and just said, and the new signings, I think, when you look through the spine of the team, Havertz, Rice, and David Raya in goal, um, took, you know, Raya, maybe Havertz, a bit more time to settle. But all three of those guys just bring a calmness, it seems, and a confidence and really good additions. And then um, I just think that that's added an extra layer, like you said there, Nick, um, to this Arsenal team of belief, really. Like, oh, yeah, these guys are relaxed. They've won trophies. They've been leaders at other teams. They've... You know, these are the people that we needed. And there's so much trust between the players, the management, and everyone at the club, it seems. It's been, I've been telling you guys this all season long when I've been lucky enough to go to Arsenal. A, they play great. And B, there is a wonderful atmosphere in terms of the confidence. There's togetherness. They're a young group. They're growing and developing together. But I think the confidence is the main factor. And they're not, even that little wobble they had at the end of 2023, they reset, did the, the trip away. And since then, they've been sensational. I just really noticed that, that calmness and composure. And Odegaard said that as well. That's kind of the difference between this time this season compared to this time last season when it unraveled. But um, some of the key battles, Nick, uh, I'm going to come to you again. I mean, Rice McKinn in midfield was a bit of a tasty one there from an England-Scotland perspective as well. Um, but then Watkins against Saliba, I'm really excited to see that as well because we know how great Watkins has been in sensational form, hasn't he, for Villa? So he's going to be their go-to guy. And I just wonder, Leon Bailey, if he starts out wide, if it's Sinchenko at left back, he might have the beating of him as well. So some really intriguing little head-to-head uh, -head battles there. Yeah, the honestly, looking out wide to me is is everything. Um, mm. you got guys like White who have been as... I mean, as under the radar good as you can you can expect from someone who kind of looks like Captain Jack Sparrow, if you look closely, just really kind of just has that sneer about him that that he he's one of those players that has that arrogance about him. And um, Kivior Kivior, and I just think it's not about whether or not Villa can take them out wide. I think they can take them out wide. I just wonder if we aren't overlooking the wide players for Arsenal because of how good the players centrally have been. How how good the defenders have been that we that we think the bat, the wide players are interchangeable. That you know that guy like Trossard comes on, so you know maybe even maybe even Bukayo Saka. I know this sounds crazy because you're in England and I know how much England loves England players. Is he potentially underrated? <laughs> it's it's possible that he is a little underrated. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to be looking out wide to see where this match is won, and you know Bailey is is a big part of that too. Yeah. Andy, score prediction, mate. How do you think this is going to play out? It feels inevitable uh, for Arsenal in, in yeah. this one. They are they're a well oiled machine uh, at this point of the season, at this point of the project. Like this, this is. I mean, 
All right, so I already mentioned Emery and, and the way that, that that played out. The first 18 months or so of Mikel Arteta were not entirely different to the way that Unai Emery's time at Arsenal went, um, but they stuck with him, and they gave him that opportunity to build a team and to build a squad, and they brought in Mikel Arteta. The last four really, truly impactful signings Arsenal have made have all been previous Premier League players. Joe, you mentioned Raya, uh, Havertz, and Rice even go back to last January. Trossard... Uh, who's been another very impactful player, Premier League experience coming into, into this team. And so it just feels at this point, Arsenal have put together a squad clearly that's good enough to win the Premier League title. They're going to come down to a point or two probably uh, at the very end. I think they get all three this weekend. 3-1 uh, to Arsenal. Nick, I'm going to go with 2-1 to Arsenal. I think it's going to be a bit tighter than that. But yeah, can't see... I can see Villa causing problems, but I just think Arsenal have a way now, right? Andy mentioned it there. Trossard, if, you know, uh, Jesus starts, it, even in Ketia and players like this coming off the bench, Thomas Partey might get a run out. There's enough strength and depth this season, right, to take care of business, it feels like. So I'm going to go for Arsenal. What about you? Yeah, I would go 2-1 or 3-1. Um, yeah. It does seem, yeah, this this is a big, big test. I know they still have to go to Spurs, and that's going to be... Massive oh, yeah. in its own way, but this is this is a tricky one, especially after the week they had. Yeah, it'll be fun. I'll be there for PST this Sunday. Arsenal against Aston Villa, title chasers against the Champions League chasers. Head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com for all the latest news, how to watch information, live analysis, and reaction from North London. It's going to be a beauty. It's the Gunners against the Villains. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.